Folks! So today, as we approach the Valley of the Shadow of March of the Stepmom Machine, what do we all think? Strange price movements. Let's start with that, shall we? So, my name is Tim and you're watching Rudy's Emporium. Today we're going to go over the draft set and collector of the new March of the Machine set, go over the chatter from the stores I talk to, and uh, the feedback from patrons and you all, and uh, so far this is where we're at. Um, on the surface, the draft and set boxes are financially where they normally are. You got draft boxes around 110, 120 plus tax on the open market online. You got about set boxes, about the same thing. About 115, maybe 120 plus tax. It was a few bucks more because they're more expensive, uh, plus tax. And then the collector boxes, which is the interesting one, a March of Machine, uh, are really cheap. Um, so we, this is the cheapest pre-market price of the collector boxes I've seen in many, many set releases. Now, I'm interested to see you all's feedback down in the comments below because is that because that people aren't happy with it? There's too many variants or people are just still angry at Magic 30. I'm very surprised to see a lot of strength in the draft set. Honestly, even the, the Jumpstart set on this one's actually holding up better than the previous, which is still like, oh, careful with that. But the collector box is really not in proportion to the set and draft, which is very unusual. Usually when you have a weaker set release, the collector box will be, you know, around 200, two, I guess right now, TCG player is 210 plus tax. So, I mean, you know, that's a little lower than the 220, 230 from Brothers War and New Phyrexia and everything. Um, remember, wholesale cost for stores who have to pay all this overhead and fees and credit card fees and distribution and handling, all these fees. Stores are paying like 185 to 190, maybe 184 if you're high volume, 183. I mean, there, there's no money in this right now. So this was, you know, this is a continuing complaint of many people who have chosen to stick with Magic. But on the other side of the coin, you've got the draft and set boxes holding pretty, I mean, draft boxes pre-order at 110 plus tax online is, is pretty hefty for a draft box. That's pretty full sign of a, a good release. And so as you watch, of course, um, yes, that will be offered to the patrons for $89 ship for draft boxes, cheapest in the country. Um, but no, it's not going to be offered, you know, this weekend when I start doing my orders and everything. It's going to take me usually about 30 days to get that kind of volume, get that kind of pricing. So no, you'll have to wait a few extra weeks. So yeah, if you're an impatient Timmy greed monster, I need it now. You know, screw you, Rudy. I can't help you with that. But yes, um, it will take uh, probably a good 30 days. But yes, the March of the Machine draft boxes will be offered to you all for the patrons at 89 ship, just like we have with Phyrexia, all be 69. And of course, Brothers War and Dominaria and Unfinity and Midnight Hunt, Crimson Val, Boulders, I don't, you, you know, all the other flipping sets. Like, so many sets. Um, next, I want to jump over to the Commander set. This is an interesting one. There is a substantial... So, I haven't gone into the expected value of this product yet, but it's quite fascinating. The expected value of the Commander deck set is quite fascinating. Usually, the annual Commander set, which is this particular release's one, have a higher expected value and usually a higher demand, which is why I usually only carry this particular Commander deck set. Although, Lord of the Rings, we're gonna have to make an exception for that one. We're gonna carry that too. Um, so, the expected value of the cards of the Commander deck set, at least as of the filming of this, is over $200 plus, just for the cards. Technically, it's like three to 400 if you count all the bulk and everything, but Still, even 200, not three to 400 seems a little fairy dusty, but that's a really high number for EV. So, the Commander deck series, I think, is going to be surprisingly really successful. Um, that's something I've always been a fan of the annual Commander series. The, the set releases now, I'm sorry, the Commander deck set with every set is just, it's just a lot of product for me. I can't carry that much logistically, and the Commander decks take up more space, but the annual one, or any specialty one like Lord of the Rings coming up, is a very interesting conversation. So I actually really, I really like the collector box. If, like if you're a player or collector looking to buy into this, you're looking at these different items, I would probably be pointing you to the collector boxes, which are cheaper than the previous releases, and of course the annual commander deck product. Uh, draft boxes, just wait for Rui to pump you. Real, you know, I'll, I'll pump your steps. Wait for Rui to pump them at 89 shift. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay 110 plus tax. I mean, you know, that, that's, you know, you're looking at like 120 out the door on eBay or TCG Player, even 115 if you're in a lower tax area for a, a draft box. I mean, dude, 
that's like $150 off a case to the uh, basement emporium in, in 30, 45 days. I would sit that one out and just chill out. Now, the set boxes, um, those are a little bit different. Again, wholesale set boxes are flipping 100 bucks. So 115 to 120, 125 range is pretty normal for online. Um, I don't see that really tanking or going higher because the last three, four Magic releases have all been pretty stable. So again, I expect March of the, you know, the step, the, the mom set, March of the Machine, I think the stepmom set is going to have a calm, stable release. And this is one of those products where people are very curious about it. Everyone's like, you got these multiverse things. You got these serialized cards with special art that are only in the collector box. And these collector boxes are really cheap. They're not expensive. They're not flying off the shelf like Brothers War collectors. That's what everybody... Everybody keeps comparing collector boxes as like Brothers War was like the benchmark collector box set. Like everyone's now... Like, is it better or worse than collect, is Brothers War, Rudy? Like, Phyrexia All B69 was, was pretty close. The collector boxes to the demand of Brothers War and how they're holding up financially. Obviously, last year, Dominar United with Liliana and actual Lost Legends... Just the market rejected it. The market just literally just crushed it like Taco Bell on an old taco. It it just it just wrecked it. It just didn't work. So yeah, even can we can we mention Dominari Remastered Collector boxes? Is anybody paying attention? Pause the video. Turn off the inappropriate websites that you only turn on when no one's around and or you're hiding in the bathroom. Pause those. I know what you're doing out there. Um, look at TCG Player. Hit Dominari Remastered Collector boxes. I already did videos. A Commander Legends all-time high. I did videos on Strixhaven collectors hitting all-time high. And is anybody following Dominar Remastered collectors? Like, how they bottomed out and been coming? I mean, it's pretty interesting. So, my opinion here, unless the market fully rejects the mom set, I believe this stepmom set's going to do just fine. I have no reason to believe Wizards going to ramp up the print run and crush the product. Because they haven't done that at all this year. And I believe we're going to continue to have a good release cycle here. And I think, if, if you want my opinion, if you're a store out there, I would be very cautious if you're just going to fire sell these things online and dump all your collector boxes and make you know, $2 a box. There's This is a pretty interesting dynamic going on. The expected, va I mean, the expected value using Dawn Glare TCG market, market price is showing an expected value of like $115. And TCG mid is showing an expected value of like 128. TCG low is showing a value over 100. So whatever you know fake number you want to use, there you go. I quoted them all so you can still attack Rudy. But that, in my opinion, these are pre-order prices. Even if you take 10, 20, 30 percent off, these are pretty solid expected values. Even if you adjust downward for 20, 30 percent, that are above Dominari and Brothers of War EVs. The numbers and the data look good. And again. That doesn't even take into consideration if you have a collector box or if we, we crack some on the channel and you pull a serialized multiverse, you know, crazy card that's going to have some outrageous value. I mean, the Brothers War collector boxes have proven that serialized cards that people like and find very beautifully eye appealing. Is that a word? Beautifully eye? It's not. We're going with it. it people, the market has shown they hold value. I mean, you know, if you hit a serialized car, even a bad one's a couple hundred dollars. The good ones are like a grand. And you're talking about collector boxes that are around $200. So anyways, so yeah, uh, as you're watching this, probably in the next 24, 48 hours, we go into the weekend here. I'm going to run my Rudy sale to the patrons. I'll let you all know how it goes. Um, obviously, with TCG Player at 210 plus tax or 220 out the door for most people, we'll probably run something that's like, if you want a small order of just a box or two, well, and this one's pretty cheap. So maybe small orders are going to be two boxes or three boxes. You know, we'll be around that between 205 range or maybe 208, 209 to your door. If you want a bigger order to the patrons, we'll probably get you down to 200. And if you want a larger order of like 12 boxes, you know, two mini cases, we'll get you below the $200 into the 190 shipped to your door. We'll probably do something like that. Um, I have the, I, as far as allocation goes, everybody's always interested in this. Um, feels pretty much the same. Like my allocation for this, is the same as it was for Phyrex, the All B69. The Stepmom and the All B69 set feel like the same collector box supply. It doesn't feel bigger or smaller. Um, on the Phyrexia set, I got just under 3,000 collector boxes. And again, on this one, it's the same thing, just under 3,000. So I think I got allocated slightly, but not really 
doesn't feel much more or less. I don't think I could have really requested 10,000 boxes. I don't even, even if I cut the check for it and pulled my uh, Zimbabwe billion dollar bill out, I don't, I don't think I could have gotten that much, but it feels like it feels muted. Like people are excited, but I'm not seeing the chatter like I did with the Phyrexia set. So I don't know if that's good or bad because there's been times when people act this way and I see a softer collector box price, Kamigawa, looking at you, and then right after release, it just, people realize how good, because we're going to know. When we, you know, after we do this next week, I'll send out a message, we'll do some box opening sign up, we'll get the, we'll get the box opening thing going up again, and we're going to know, because when we do a box opening, and after two, three videos of cracking a couple boxes a piece, once we get 10, 12 boxes in, we're going to know how it feels. And immediately, like, we did Dominar Remaster Collector Boxes. Like, I knew immediately. When we did Phyrexia, all be 69 boxes, like, I knew. Like, I told y'all, when we were cracking the first box opening on this channel, and I remember Dominar Remaster, or even Brothers War, I remember doing the box opening going, oh my god. Dominar Remastered Collectors were just stupid. Like, I remember opening, and every pack in box was so outrageously loaded. And then we did, even, even the Phyrexia set, I was like, oh my god. The amount of the mythics in these Phyrexian, the, the Phyrexian text versions, the fancy little logo that we call those the oil slick or the versions, all these versions of these cards. Like, and I looked on my TCG player, and the flow through rate and the selling of the prices of these variants, I mean, people were buying them like crazy. And I saw that, I knew immediately that the Phyrexian collector boxes were not going to collapse. And again, you factor that in with the not outrageous print runs anymore, and we have a stable market. So, that's where I see March of the Machine right now, folks. Overall, EV looks good. Collector box, to me, looks underpriced long-term. Set and draft. Uh, draft, to me, looks overpriced. If you, I don't recommend 110 plus tax. It was about 120 ship for a draft box. Uh, honestly, you should shill for Rudy. And you should just be like, you know what? I hate Rudy, but I gotta be a flipping patron. Somebody close their account! Be angry at Rudy! Beep, boop, boop! I need... You know, honestly, that I wouldn't pay 120 a box for draft. I think that's a little inflated. Set boxes for about 115 to 125. I think that's a fair price. Uh, to me, collector boxes and the commander deck sets seem like the two that seem more opportunistic. Is that a word? I try. I'm trying to use big words. Cut me some slack. I feel like the collector box because this reminds me of a Kamigawa release. Kamigawa did this. It came out at that 210, 220. Was that actually was that before the price increase? I think Kamigawa was before the price increase, too. So, Kamigawa came out, same thing, 210, 220, and then it literally, people started opening the boxes, and then the whole neon ink thing. And man, they just, they were, just, they just ramped straight up in price to 300. And then, of course, Wizards in their glorious overprinting era of 2021, 2022, decided to, well, dump. Surprise! We printed a lot more, which then they just they overprinted it and they sat on the rest of it and they dumped a wave two and crushed the product. And again, even then, the Kamigawa collectors dropped all the way to like 170, 80, and now they're back above 200 because the whole market's reinflating. So again, you know, I'm not a fan of corporate Hasbro and the people at the top, but the products look good, folks. And people who are going to be led by emotions and don't want to be a part of it are going to continue to miss out as the market as a whole continues to march forward, no matter how we all feel, no matter how emotional and frustrated we are about the variants, the print runs, all the versions, it's out of control. We all know that. We've talked about it a million times. The Magic 30, the Fireside Chats, all this dumb shit. We've talked about it, but at the end of the day, the power of Magic the Gathering, the insane player base of 10 million, 20 million player base, I don't. the amount of play... It, worldwide, I mean, it's just a very powerful entity. And no matter how you or I feel, and we, you know what I'm talking about. We, we, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it's going to march forward, no pun intended. And I, so right now, like I said, that's the Rudy opinion right now. I think drafts overprinted, not overprinted. I think draft is overpriced. I think set boxes between 115, 125 are definitely fair. Um, obviously, Oh, sorry. It, uh, I'll probably be selling the set boxes this weekend. I don't know. We'll do, I don't know. We'll take off 10% or something. We'll figure it out. But I really like, I really like the, the collector and commander on this. That's kind of my go-to thing. And yes, folks, I am biased because I am going to be selling the product this weekend. 
And I'll let you all know if I sell out or if I get stuck with heavy bags, as I always report. Sometimes I tell you all I only sell half and I get stuck with it. Other times I tell you all it sells out and holy crap that I miscalculate. And there is no way to predict which direction we are going to go. But that is my attitude right now. And I just, one last comment. I just don't see if this set is well received like it's going to be. With the new Ren and Stimpy and the Phyrexians and all these different variants. All, if this set is well received, which I think it's going to be. I don't see draft boxes at 110, 120 when the collector box is 210. You can't have an expensive draft and set box uptick in price to 110, 120, 130, but then the collector box be 200. You can't have, like, because that means the draft and set is overpriced or the collector is underpriced. You have to have an equilibrium because you're putting pressure in directions where it needs to, to self correct. And to me, the fact that you can only get the multiverse serialized cards with exclusive art on it in one version, which is the collector box, to me, that is a very interesting thing. So, and yes, and one last comment, um, for those of you still watching, no, um, I will not be offering the collector boxes by the master case. I will not be selling them by 24 boxes. Um, I'm only, the most I'm probably going to sell them by is by 12 or maybe even by six. Uh, no, I'll probably do 12. I have some patrons that really like the uh, the two mini cases. I, they like to keep one sealed and open one. So 12 will be probably the max for the patrons. I'm not going to be doing 24 because, again, I kind of don't want it to blow out or sell out too quick. And I kind of, I don't know. I just, the Rudy opinion on here, I just, the multiverse serialized card thing is what's really got my attention. And it's, it's bottlenecked in that one product. And I don't want to blow it out at a, at, Literally, I, I just, I don't know. I'm going to go with that. And I, if I'm wrong, I'll let you guys know. Hope you learned something today, as always. Keep in mind, folks, just remember, I am standing by my opinion. And that's why you'll see lower views on this channel. I'll still put some, you know, clickbait negative. I'll put I'll put a bad title on here, because it's the end of the video. No one's watching. We'll put, we'll put, you know, March of the Machine is a huge failure. We'll make some dramatic title. And I still believe that we're in for a pretty good year, moving into 2023, 2024 here. Um, I really like the direction of everything. Oh, and one last thing. I know no one's watching now. Um, with the reinflation of Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two main crypto chains, plus obviously USDC stable coins being stable again at $1, not depegged. Um, I'm seeing a lot, I'm getting a lot more patrons um, sending payments again through crypto. That's also been an uptick of a lot of my orders. So I've noticed that in the last 30, 45 days when Bitcoin broke 30,000, which it may be above or below when you watch this, and Ethereum is heading, Ethereum might even go back to 2000. Ethereum's 18, 1900. So Ethereum's, you, when you watch this, Ethereum could be over 2000 again. Um, based on what I'm seeing, um, I'm also seeing that patrons are being wanting to use their crypto again. So I like even when I ran the MetaZoo native sale, I had, a, I had 40, 50 transactions of crypto just on that one sale. That was quite a bit. I haven't seen that in a while. Even on the flesh and blood sale, we had a large uptick. And crypto orders across the board from even U.S. and internationally. So that is more of a, another bullish positive sign that I've been telling you all that not only do I like the direction and where the stock market is. And again, stock market can do anything. We can go down 10, 20 percent and then I like it even more. And then I'm, we may have to start slowing down on cardboard then and buy some stocks then. But overall, I like the direction of the market. I feel that long term, this is a great entry point. And I do feel that crypto is a great entry point for long term. And I mean, five, 10 year position building. And even CCGs, the reinflation uptick of everything from Pokemon, flesh and blood, the new MetaZoo native set that's on fire. Stop asking me about MetaZoo native. There are no more kits. Stop asking me. Holy smokes, people. Um, even the new flesh and blood outsiders, absolutely just doing phenomenal. Um, and <laughs> there's like, I'm tracking five Y sets now that have bottomed off their lows and actually coming back above. Wholesale pricing level and back into profitability. I mean, and of course, Pokemon, of course, always goes to the flipping moon. So overall, I know being positive and not being dramatic to you all doesn't get the views and this channel doesn't make as much money. But it's important now that we are in a different market to report how the market is to you all. And I know it's not exciting. It's not sexy. The, the views on these videos are going to be lower and that is okay. The, the people who really care and want to know about the ebbs and flows of the market these are important times to understand. This is a turning market cycle right now. We are not crashing in sideways and just eroding in value in a bear market. We have turned. I'm not going to call it a bull market yet. I'm not there. But I'm telling you all, we are no longer in a bear market. We are trending sideways and we are wanting to push out of it. 
And as I, I think in another three or four months, if March and the Machine does well, and we go into Commander Masters, and it does well, okay? And on top of that, you know, MetaZoo Native can continue to blow it out of the water and not crash. You guys are aware MetaZoo Native is the first and only set to have, like, dual land auras and, like, these full art hidden alternate secret rares. Is anybody aware of this stuff? Is it, is it like, the Flesh and Blood Outsider set? Have you seen some of these Codex cards? Have, have you seen what's going on? Like, anyways. So, I, I just want people to be aware the market looks good. It's going to be turbulent. It's going to be scary moments. But the market looks good, folks. The best opportunity to buy was the last 12 months in the bear market. I'm done rambling. I'm sorry, folks. Have a great day. Let's all get some tacos.